The idea of romanticizing your life isn't anything new or revolutionary. It essentially boils down to this notion that you can turn the mundane, monotonous, daily routine tasks into enjoyable, fulfilling moments filled with more presence and appreciation for where you're at in your life. I'm not here to talk about the merit of whether or not romanticizing every single aspect of your life is beneficial. Rather, I want to dive into how the clothing you wear can serve as a form of romanticization in your life and as a result change the relationship that you have with the clothing that you wear as well as explore how the clothes you wear are directly correlated with your mood and status of mind for those of you who don't know me my name is drew what it do it's nice to meet you let's talk about how fashion alters your mood i make this look good let's start with a simple rhetorical question do you think that the clothes that you wear affect your mood? Or is it the other way around? I think most of us understand that the clothing that we wear can impact our mood and our perceptions about ourselves. You see this play out all the time in day to day life. If you have a big presentation for school or for work and you dress in your best clothing, the idea behind that is not only does your clothing signal to your audience the significance of your presentation, but it signals to yourself that this moment is unlike other day to day day activities. The psychology of clothing is one of the most interesting aspects of fashion. And one of the coolest studies that I've ever read about is called the Enclothed Cognition Study, or the White Coat Study for all of us non-scientist types, <laughs> in which University of Columbia professor Adam Galinsky wanted to find out whether or not wearing a white lab coat would improve the performance of an individual on a particular attention task. His findings were really interesting. Those in the control group, meaning those in the lab coats, performed on average better than those not in the lab coats within that same task. And it's fascinating because they tried to give different control groups different garments to wear to see whether or not the performance would improve. Like for example, they gave painter jackets instead of lab coats. And it was so interesting. Only the lab coats increased the performance of the participants in the attention task. But you're probably like, okay, Drew, we get it. Wearing a lab coat probably will help your performance when it comes to participating in a attention task, whatever that means. <laughs> but, but what does this have to do with romanticizing your life? Well, I point out this study to say, what you wear matters. Not only does it matter in terms of how you feel about yourself, but it actually matters within different circumstances in your life. If you wear something that you perceive to be a bit more casual or laid back, I bet there's a high chance that when you're in a particular environment or in a conversation, you yourself will act more casual, mellow, and laid back within that conversation. Now, if you wear something that you don't feel comfortable or confident in, then your actions and words will display insecurity and discomfort. And this is how what you wear can begin to help you subtly live a life with more energy, joy, and equipoise. Something else I wanna point out that I think I didn't emphasize as well as I could have is this study really points out the power of perception. Meaning it's not about owning really fancy or expensive things, rather it's more about believing in your wardrobe and in your style. If you use the power of belief towards having a positive outlook on your outfits, then you will actually positively impact your life little by little with the clothes you wear. This is how you begin to romanticize your life with your clothes. Now, before we move on, a big inspiration for why I decided to make this video is the fact that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the best ways to positively impact your mental health is by listening to your favorite audiobooks and podcasts with Audible. Maintaining your mental health should be just as much as a priority as maintaining your physical health. And both Audible and myself think listening to some of your favorite stories and books is one of the best ways to go about combating mental health. Whether it's diving into your favorite self-help book or just listening to something that's science fiction, audio is one of the most 
powerful ways to impact your mental health in a positive manner. New members can try Audible free for 30 days, and as a member, you're allotted the ability to choose one title a month at no additional cost from a wide selection of bestsellers and new releases. Visit www.audible.com slash Drew J. It'll also be linked in the description. Or text Drew J to 500-500 to get started with Audible for free. In the notes for this video, I wrote down the power that confidence has on an individual and their outfits. Have you ever been walking down the street and all of a sudden a person's coming towards you and their outfit is just out of this world? Maybe in a good way uh, or maybe in a bad way. <laughs> but as this person passes you on the street, you either have two thoughts that come to your mind. One, you think, damn, I wish I had the confidence to wear something like that. And or two, you think, how the heck does this person have that much confidence to step outside their home and wear something like that? I would never do that or I would never wear that in public. Raise your hand, we've all been there or, or maybe you're that confident MF who's walking down the street, no care in the world with all the confidence in the world. If you're like that, kudos to you, kudos to you. I'm not saying that you need to step outside your home and wear what you wore for Halloween every single day of the week to prove that you're a confident dresser, but being confident in your wardrobe, your body, and your style is one of the quickest ways to improve your mood as it relates to what you wear. For me, I have a few items in my wardrobe that I would consider to be staple confidence boosters. The bare knuckles varsity jacket, my five panel jeans, my GH Baswegian loafers. These are wardrobe staples that take the stress out of worrying, do I look good or not? Find these items in your closet and wear them as often as possible. It'll help romanticize your life. Trust me. The last idea I want to talk about is another idea centered around the psychology of clothing and how it affects our mood. And more specifically, it's centered around color. Now, maybe you noticed or maybe you're just listening, but I have gone through a bit of a metamorphosis here and changed my outfit. The psychology of colors is one of the most fascinating aspects of how our brain works and how we associate different colors with different meaning. Now, I want to preface this section by saying that just because there's one color that may positively or negatively impact your mood, it doesn't mean that you should disregard your own personal taste and likes when it comes to the colors that you like to implement within your outfits. We all sort of understand what color psychology is and means. Essentially, Colors elicit different moods based off the connotations that we associate with that particular color. White is perceived as pure, clean, and elegant. Black is perceived as bold, slim, and authoritative. Blue is calm. Orange is exciting. And red is alluring. And the list goes on and on and on when it comes to color psychology. The way in which I like to implement colors within my outfits and my wardrobe is trying to be subtle with colors at times and then by using colors to be extremely bold and draw your attention to a particular aspect of an outfit. As of recent, my favorite colors to wear have been yellow, brown, green, blue, and of course black. Using yellow as an example, yellow is a really bright color. And when I wear yellow, I try not to mix too many other bright, very ultraviolet or attention grabbing colors into the mix, unless I do want to do that depending on my mood. But it's all about playing with different formulas for your outfits to create a particular mood that you enjoy or that you perceive others will enjoy or that you just like altogether. Finding the right balance between colors that work for your accessories, tops, footwear, and bottoms is an awesome way to rethink fashion into a new context. Essentially, romanticizing your life all comes down to a subtle mindset shift away from thinking clothing is a non-factor in your life to understanding that the clothing you wear can impact your day-to-day -day mood in a positive or negative way depending on how much intention you put into your outfits. There's an old saying that goes, thoughts become words, words become actions, 
actions become habits and habits become the way you live the rest of your life. So I challenge you, the next time you're going to meet up with a friend, go to the office or head to school, attempt to use your clothes as a way to aid you in your social endeavors. And I promise you, if you do this, you'll in effect help romanticize your life and alter your mood and mindset for the better. What do you think about this idea of romanticizing your life? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you for me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace. Yo, what is good, post vid vid? Here's a fist bump for the one time. Bop. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Here's another one for the two times. Bop. Thank you guys so much for the post vid vid question of the day i want to know what mental health struggles if any have you been dealing with i know you know mental health is something that's a bit taboo at times and i don't know why but i'll tell you mine for for myself i think one of the biggest struggles that i'm going through in terms of mental health and just social health is the older you get sometimes it's harder it seems as though it's harder to make friends especially in your 20s when you just had school, you had all this social interaction, and then you're everyone's so busy, you know, chasing their jobs and their careers and their lives and whatever they're doing. And they can get lonely. Even old friends, you know, friends you've had for a long time, they get busy. They get married, they have kids, that kind of thing. That's like some of my friends are getting married and whatnot. So it's it's just a bit crazy. And, and finding friendships and maintaining them is not the easiest thing in the world. So let me know your mental health struggles down in the comments. I'd be curious to read it. Hashtag PVV when you comment. We'll see you guys next week. Shout out to Audible for the sponsorship. Uh, show love. If you guys care about reading audiobooks, I've been reading a ton. So like it's a really appropriate sponsorship. But regardless, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.